So I was all excited that I got my laser all set up. And I started playing with it. And then I noticed that there was these... I was starting to have flame issues, like a fireball behind the laser all the time. It was melting the acrylic top. You could see it right there in that picture. So I started doing some research on Facebook user groups for Omptech. And it seems like a lot of people are having the same issue. So I started asking some of my friends that I knew had lasers. And we were making sure everything was correct. I was changing some things on my exhaust. And my buddy Jake turned me on to OEA Design Works. Uh, that has the, they put together this nice little web page with uh, air, how to do an air assist, what kind of parts you need. So I figure I'm going to give it a shot. And it wasn't too expensive. So I'm going to give you a little rundown here of me building this, uh, what I found and what I changed. Uh, but if you take notice here on my regulator that I have the cinematic part where you hook up the hose on the left side. And I'm like, ah, oh, man, I really don't want the hose to be in the front. So I found that there was a back port where I could change it around. Uh, so I would still keep the in and out correct, but it's just going to be opposite. In and out. So I, I pretty much just needed to flip where the gauge would be on the front of the machine. Or on the front of the regulator, I mean. So I debated this for a while. Where am I going to put this? Where am I going to... And I didn't have it on camera here, but I figured... I'm going to have it on this side because this is the side that's going to be visible to me when I'm like on my computer and I could easily look at it and son of a bitch, I hate when drill bits break. <laughs> so yeah, I just started going to town and yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a real fast build because I was constantly arguing with my inner self where to put things. And that's just how it goes. But eventually, whatever you see in the video here is, is what won the battle. And I'm happy with it. Now it's time to install the regulator on the machine. Be very careful when you're tightening up plastic pieces. You don't want to break it, so just snug it up nice. So I found this cool trick uh, for multiple makers online where you, you put tape uh, on something that you're going to need to know where the, uh, the bolt holes align. And I thought that was so cool. I don't know why I ever... Didn't think of that, but I think Punish Props, uh, Van Oaks Props, a bunch of people are doing that now, but it's awesome. So uh, I never finished the bolt holes yet because I wanted to try it out first and play around. But I wanted to talk to you about the electrics. Solenoid valves are pretty much like a magnet. There's a coil there, which is a magnet, and the one and two are are not um, polarized. So you could put either the plus or minus on each side. It's going to act the same way. But make sure you put the ground where it's supposed to be. And that's in the bottom part, like in the drawing. So I did have a, a few things that were kind of screwy with this. I, I messed with those bolt holes for the solenoids for a while. And, um, uh, yeah, I had to kind of make the holes bigger so that way all the screws would fit in there. But I fought with that for a while. It wasn't too bad. Just be careful as you're drilling that there isn't anything behind it. Like, I made sure that all the wires were out of the way. I made sure that everything was out of the way uh, before drilling. So now it's time to hook up the hoses. I'm ready to start putting everything together. And I have to figure out how I'm going to get the wires into the cabinet. And 
I think right here is as good as any. Of course, my head's in a way when I'm marking it. Big head. <laughs> this here is a unibit. It has many levels. Works great, especially when you're uh, drilling in the cabinets. Electricians use this a lot. And then I love cleaning it up things. Just in case if I ever were to remove this, it wouldn't have any sharp edges on it. I'm a stickler for that because I've been cut many a times playing with junction boxes and stuff that guys didn't uh, clean up. Only takes a little bit of time, you know? All right, now I'm ready to start routing in the, the wires. Um, and this is, uh, what is it, doorbell wire. And I have tons of that. I, I bought a big roll of it. And I seem to use it for everything. So now it's time to hook into the control box. And I'm not going to go into too much detail on this. Um, I just want to refer you back to oeadesignworks.com. They're the guys that, that did the nice little air assist thing. Um, the only thing I have that was conf confusing when I did theirs is I watched the videos. And for all of this stuff to work, you need to make sure you go into your laser. Um, I think through uh, Lightburn. And you have to turn on this feature uh, to allow this output to work. Um, and they talk about Lightburn and they also talk about um, another piece of software, but they don't say that you could do one or the other. So just keep that in mind that if, you, if you're using Lightburn, you only have to do Lightburn. Um, you could go in that way and turn on the features. I don't know if you guys could see this, but I took off, this is the airline that went to the pump. Uh, so I took it off and put this coupler on here. And then this is where the air pump intake was. So this little piece is on it to suck air. So I am going to, I took this part off because this went uh, to the pump also so now to get it to get the uh, airline to the outside so I could hook up I'm just gonna come out that guy like that see that I'm gonna shove this through the air pump hole and then I'm gonna hook up this is the line that goes up to the actual laser head. Put that together there. Make sure nothing's in the way. So now I disconnected my, my air pump electrically and uh, pneumatically. Took the hose off and I took the intake off. Now I'm just going to uh, run this to the front of the machine. Not going to see it anyway because it's in the back. Anyway, I'm just going to use these guys. I think I'm gonna put a put a little elbow maybe. Do I? I'll just shove it right in. There.
I'm going to cut it shorter. Things here on the side it's gonna be protected because I have this little bumper guard here um, the only thing I don't like about it is if you do it this way try and get the air since this is a, a dripper when when there's no air here the moisture the water that's trapped in here will come out um, an eye on that maybe I'll move it if too much water gets in there but on that I am done I do have to send the one solenoid back because it's open all the time it's leaking so I'm gonna try it out well hey guess what no more fireball and I'm so happy cuts like butter now uh, now one thing that you should do is I went to Lightburn and there is this uh, test piece that you could use um, and it'll go through all the power settings uh, power and speed of your machine um, with each thing and you could have one of these ready for whatever you're gonna be using like for example you can see up in the top right corner this is a three millimeter piece of black acrylic and if you notice some of them are cutting through some of them are not so you would use the best cut thing uh, I think I use uh, what did I use I used 10 millimeter by 25% power I believe is like my nicest thing but depending on the material that I'm using um, that'll be your factor. So, yep, it's like butter, baby. Butter. And I'm so happy because I thought something was wrong. I thought it was a $2,000 piece of junk. But I recommend it. It's a good laser. Have a good time, guys. Hope I helped you out in some way. Um, if you got any value from this, please like and subscribe. And uh, ring the bell. Come back and see us again. See you later. Peace.